welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2022, PP22, here in Bucharest, Romania, where I've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio today by Ezra Chiloba, who's the Director General of the Communications Authority for Kenya. Yeah. Ezra, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. What is the status of ICT development in Kenya? Well, um, I will say that if you look at the entire Africa, uh, Kenya, I think, is among the countries that has made uh, significant progress in terms of that uh, sector. Uh, we now talk of the digital economy, and uh, that has been powered by a significant number of uh, uh, extent of connectivity of the population. Today, we are talking about 96% of citizens who are able to actually have an opportunity to access uh, broadband services, that's the internet. And for us, that is significant, uh, given that um, uh, uh, there's a lot of investment uh, enabled by the government and the private sector towards connectivity uh, through laying of the infrastructure, uh, fiber uh, infrastructure, and also working closely with the mobile uh, service providers. So in terms of uh, development, that is like the mark of progress. Uh, the other bit maybe, uh, if you may know, is that um, we pioneered uh, mobile uh, money. M-Pesa. Yeah. M-Pesa. Yeah. Uh, and that has kind of uh, spurred a lot of development and more and more incentive to innovate in that specific area. Uh, and Kenya also remains like the hub of innovation for, for the region. A lot more multinationals who are interested in looking at how to invest in Africa have come to set base in Kenya. Uh, and for us, that means you know, the country is opened up uh, for these digital economy um, uh, opportunities, not just for Kenya, but also for the entire region. Yeah, so the, the significant Silicon process. Savannah. There. You are Silicon Savannah of Africa. That's how we, we exactly. call it. No, yeah. no, absolutely. No, yeah, I mean, I've yeah. been there, as I say, a couple of times. Excellent, and uh, we've yeah. had, uh, ICU has had conferences there. Yes. And we've visited uh, technolo technological hubs there, yes. too. That uh, There seems to be a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm, yes, certainly, yes. for technology mm -hmm. and technological yeah. uh, innovation there. Exactly. And, and if you look at uh, how the future is going to unfold, the government having realized the potential in the digital economy, we just launched our uh, our ten-year uh, second master plan on the uh, digital economy, and we want to deepen uh, a little bit more when it comes to uh, access uh, to technology and uh, the value that we create, we gain out of uh, technology investment. So the next ten years are going to be very significant for the country when it comes to I ICT development. Let's talk about strategy. What is Kenya's strategy to ensure the attainment of the two goals of universal connectivity and sustainable digital transformation? Maybe the best way to start looking at it uh, is to look at uh, uh, perhaps the challenge uh, that we've experienced uh, so far. While we talk about 96% of Kenyans having access, uh, having the opportunity to access uh, broadband, for example, uh, this will have, you know, challenges in terms of uh, utilizing or having that meaningful uh, access. And what the government has done now is, you know, opening up uh, the space for more and more investment uh, from a regulatory point of view. Uh, you know, it's a free market. And what we've been trying to do is to ensure that as many players as possible come into that particular space to ensure that, you know, we have or products and services that are fit for the context in which we're operating in. Uh, the, the second bit we, we, we may need to look at is, uh, you look at the government uh, structure where traditionally we've been offering services from the traditional way, uh, away from the value of, that is brought about by digital uh, inclusion. So what the government has decided is to go to automate a lot of its services. And for us, that is an easier way of ensuring there's a greater access to quality public services. So you have one stream that the government has allowed private sector to invest, but the other stream is where government itself is actually investing to ensure that uh, citizens have the uh, greatest benefit uh, arising from ICTs. So in the next 10, 10 years, as I mentioned earlier, is that we're going to see a lot more uh, investment in infrastructure, 
a lot more investment in the content that is being provided by the different um, uh, ICT service providers, uh, a lot more inf investment in skills and uh, powered by automating government services as well as opening up the market for more private investment. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, challenges. What are the challenges facing developing countries mm. in their efforts to ensure digital inclusion and that no one is left behind? Yeah, I think that's an important question. Uh, if you look at it, uh, again, going back to the same question, while there's greater potential for connectivity, there's huge investment in infrastructure, the main challenge we are facing today is the cost of access. Um, you can have connectivity, but that is not meaningful unless you have a smart device, for example, a smartphone or a smart tablet. A lot of many African countries, uh, citizens cannot afford those devices. And we've been having this idea that perhaps it is the high time the uh, manufacturers of this, these devices and the global, com co uh, global community coming in the ICT space to come together to figure out how we can enable access to smart devices by the poor and imagining a smart device that costs not more than $500. I was going to say like a mobile phone uh, equivalent uh, of the $100 uh, laptop, uh, exactly, for example. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, those are the, so we do not have access to cheaper devices and the cost has been going up and up. Currently, when you have global inflation rising, it affects that uh, category of uh, citizens as well. So we need to get cheaper uh, smart devices uh, across. We need to work around uh, relevant uh, content um, because each country in Africa uh, is special to itself. And a lot of content that is being consumed is really from you know, uh, outside Africa. And that means, therefore, the appetite to use uh, those dev uh, devices or the opportunity provided by, uh, uh, for example, connectivity is not there. So for us to be able to fully tap into that potential, we need to get relevant content for the, for, 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 for the region. And this is a challenge to developers. And the last bit, of course, is skills. Skills in terms of enabling younger uh, younger, uh, new generation uh, to come up with solutions that fit their context, but at the same time, skills for the users. So we also have challenges there. So the urban dwellers have different skills and opportunities to be able to access and utilize the, 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 the con uh, connectivity opportunities. The rural communities have got their own challenges as well uh, uh, when it comes to skills. So when you're deploying uh, strategies to improve skills, we also have to look at those diverse uh, interests and you know, uh, situation or status of, of, of skills capabilities. So yeah, from a strategy point of view, focus on, on, on skills, focus on access to cheaper uh, and smart devices, as well as content that is relevant for, for the region. Well, Israel Chileva, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. I hope that some of those will come to fruition in the not too distant future and hopefully we'll get to catch up with you very soon yeah. too. Watch this space the next 10 years. Excellent, all right. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Asante Sana.